But let's get right into this. A whole new word. Last night, the president apparently starting to write something on Twitter about the media, despite the constant negative press. Perhaps he was going to write coverage. He wrote the word kafefe. And it stayed up for an entire six hours before it was taken down this morning. You know what? Like, I don't know about America, but Donald Trump has definitely made Twitter great again. Say what you want. <laughs> Say what you want. And I'm, I'm just gonna enjoy this moment. I don't care coverage or not coverage. I don't care. People were searching Kofefe on the internet <laughs> like it was a Kim Kardashian nude. People were on it. And you know what made this tweet a mystery? Is that Donald Trump sent out Kofefe and then deleted it six hours later. And it wasn't even a complete sentence. Like, why did he stop? Did someone tackle him? Like, <laughs> was he letting the tweet marinate overnight? What, like, there are so many theories. I was, I was thinking maybe, maybe Trump was typing on his phone, right? And he's still jet lagged from his trip, so then he dozes off. <laughs> and then the phone fell between the White House sofa cushions. <laughs> so then he's reaching, that's happened to all of us. You fall asleep and then you're reaching for it, you're reaching for it, and you're trying to get, and then he was trying to retrieve it, but then he got distracted because of all the other stuff he was finding in there, you know? <laughs> so he was like, gotta get it, gotta get, oh, remote control. <laughs> all right, no more CNN. <laughs> it's like a uh, $10 bill, score. <laughs> uh, what else? Obama's real birth certificate. <laughs> Oh my God, oh my God, he was born in Kenya. I knew it, he was born in Kenya. Wait, what does it say on the back? Psych Donald, you dumbass. Damn you, Obama, damn you. Now, uh, as much, look, as much as Kofefi was a, was a gaffe, it must have been nice for the White House to have a Trump blunder that for a change didn't threaten national security, all right? <laughs> and more importantly, it provided a welcome distraction from the fallout that came from his recent foreign trip. Multiple signs of deep divisions between the president and other leaders. An extraordinary rift has appeared between transatlantic friends. German Chancellor Angela Merkel bluntly saying the U.S. is no longer a reliable partner. The trip to NATO was an absolute positive disaster. A State Department official who told the Daily Beast that when it comes to diplomacy, President Trump is a drunk tourist, loud and tacky, shoving his way around the dance floor. Okay, okay, that last one is just disrespectful. Let's be honest. I mean, first of all, Donald Trump doesn't drink, right? He's this way without booze. Secondly, <laughs> he can't dance. We know that. <laughs> That's true. He can't. Look at, no, when he does, when, like, when he, it just looks like a monster who's been chained up. <laughs> Now, now, if a normal administration came back from a big foreign trip and faced this kind of criticism, it would work hard to defend itself, maybe even address the substance of some of the concerns. But this is the Trump administration. They didn't get here by being normal. Why try to wrestle someone else's narrative when you can just create your own? Sean Spicer! <laughs> I want to begin by recapping the incredible historic trip that the president and the first lady have just concluded because it truly was an extraordinary week for America and our people. We've never seen before at this point in the presidency such sweeping reassurance of American interest. This was an extraordinarily successful and historic nine-day trip the president took. Outstanding success. Universal praise. Quote, in the short space of three days, Trump carried out a semi-revolution. Wow. <laughs> wow. A semi-revolution. <laughs> like, what does that mean? <laughs> what, you cut off half the king's head? I don't know what that means. <laughs> but did you see how incredible that was, huh? Not only is the administration ignoring all of the criticism of the trip, they're basically saying it was the greatest presidential trip of all time. And I don't care what you say, you've got to admire that, right? To help understand this, think of the Trump administration as a chef. Right? Before the trip, they would make excuses for why they burned your food. You know? Sean Spice and his team would come to the table and be like, I'm so sorry for what happened to your healthcare Alfredo. Uh, you must remember, uh, the, the, the chef, he's an outsider. He's never cooked before. He's more of a businessman than a chef. And, and so I think in time you'll come to understand. But that was before. The new plan that this administration has is attack. It's all about attack now. Now the chef just comes to your table and explains to you why your burnt ass rock steak is the finest meal you've ever had. <laughs> just walks up like, before you say anything, let me tell you about the truest way to enjoy your food. <laughs> the way fire intended it. Untainted by the timer of the oven, you're welcome. <laughs> it's a new attack. And the question is, what gives Sean Spicer the confidence to go out there and say straight-faced, 
that Donald Trump is now the patron saint of diplomacy? Well, it's because he knows that there's a large part of the population, you may know them as Republicans, who believe <laughs> that Donald Trump is far more credible than most news outlets. So if Trump says millions of illegals voted in the election, they believe it. If Trump says Obama wiretapped him, they believe that too. If Trump says Kofefe, <laughs> look, they don't know what it means, <laughs> but damn it, they believe it. <laughs> Trump's whole political career has taught him that he doesn't need anyone's reality but his own. And that's why his staff isn't just praising him as the world's greatest diplomat, now they're praising him as the world's greatest human. The White House spokeswoman, Hope Hicks, released this statement. President Trump has a magnetic personality and exudes positive energy. He has built great relationships throughout his life and treats everyone with respect. He is brilliant with a great sense of humor and an amazing ability to make people feel special and aspire to be more than even they thought possible. Wow. Great sense of humor and an amazing ability to make people feel special. That sounds less like Donald Trump and more like Gandhi combined with Ellen. <laughs> Who would be the greatest talk show host of all time? Let's be honest. Hello? Mr. President, how are you? Yes, of course. Oh, you want me to let people know they can watch full episodes of The Daily Show for free anytime with the Comedy Central app or at thedailyshow.com? Yes, of course. Yes, I know I'm fake news. All right, love you too. Bye-bye.